In the last wise words of Froshkin herself. If you don't like it, mm -hmm. don't watch it. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Yes, alleluia, it's the video show. And now, the man the BBC calls... Jason King on Kung Fu Hot Dog. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and it's time for another video today. <laughs> and yes, me and my dead cat. Yep, she's still dead. We're going to look at G4 TV again. Sorry, G4 Skin TV. And remember I made a video a few days ago where I said they're dropping subscribers. Some people said, well, they've only dropped 2,000 subscribers. It's not a big deal. But 2,000 subscribers lost in 24 hours is kind of a big deal. Remember, it was 498,000 last week. It's now 494,000 subscribers. I reckon that's gonna drop down to 490 by the end of the week, maybe before. And <laughs> let's look at this video. This is their latest video, which they uploaded one day ago. I'm gonna, I've blocked the sound anyway. And uh, oh, I love this comment here. I hope these people have a backup plan. Holy cow, this is a dumpster. Yikes, look at that. 688 people liked it, 2,800 <laughs> dislikes. And this is on the G4 TV official channel. The engagement rate is, it's good. It's not brilliant. And yeah, it's a negative on YouTube as well. That's, that's pretty bad. <laughs> oh, there she is again. Wow, I mean, she's had some gall to come back up there after her outburst. And look, I really hate her personality. I mean, when I was watching some of the older shows and I'm just like, who is this person? And, and she's trouble wherever she goes. Apparently she has a reputation. I mean, this is the Frost skin, sorry, the Foreskin, who thought that Bioware was owned by Microsoft. Uh, I think he might be getting confused with the other people that Microsoft bought last year. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you, th maybe you got your wires crossed, Froskin. Who knows? So let's go back to that infamous speech she made this week. I'm just going to play you just the key part of that speech because I'm going to get into this video and just kind of back up what I'm saying today. And you know what? Not everybody's going to agree with my take on this, but for the people that do come into the comments and just say, dude, well done. In fact, some people were waiting for me to react to this. So I was quite surprised. So I'm glad I did this, but I hate bad takes like this. I hate when fans are getting attacked for no reason at all. And and again, the thing is, G4 are backing Froshkin all the way because she felt insulted by people who didn't find her as bangable as Olivia Munn or Morgan Webb. Really? What, did anybody actually say that in the comments? If they did, can we see receipts, G4 Skin TV? Can we see those? Probably not. Here we go. And it's weird. Women do not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Morgan Webb, Olivia Munn did not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Right, so she says women aren't there to be objectified. They're not there for your eyes. So what about this? Hmm. Strapping male host, who I'm assuming goes to the gym every other day, and she's pretending to grab his ass. Now, in the age of Me Too, is that still a thing? I don't know. No, he could actually turn around and say, hmm, you know what? She actually um, humiliated me on the TV. Granted, they only had 688 likes and probably not many, many views. Uh, but these comments below that video, Mike dropped, God damn. <laughs> yeah, give that one a like. Uh, Royce Lopez, hey, Frost Curran, this you? This man here isn't for you to get off on. Your unconscious bias is ruining his day. Oh dear, yeah, and oh my god, finally someone brings up the sexist elephant in the room. This is the video game's content that we want. Thank you. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's like she can sit there and make those comments, but yet, what is she doing here? I say no more about that one. So, the reason why I talk about that, and no, by the way, before I get to this, someone had pointed out to me that if you compare Froskin to Justin Bieber, there is no difference. Oh yes, they're correct. <laughs> wow, we. She has a very unlikable personality. Look, look at her profile pic here on her Twitter account. Mm, mm. Holy shit! The kind of woman you want to bring home to your ma? 
Probably not, actually. And in fact, if you were to bring it back to your ma, you get a gold medal from me. That's for sure. But I'm talking about this whole objectification of women. That's the that's the focal point of her little diatribe on that meltdown last week. But men and women, I'm talking grown ass men and women, they have this thing called free will, right? Where they can actually think for themselves and decide if they want to be objectified in the public domain, in the public eye. Now, why do I say this? Well, I've got two reasons. The first, FHM magazine back in the 1990s. I made a video about this looking back at that great decade and do check it out when you get a chance. I'll leave it in the link below. But FHM, especially in the UK, you know, up to a certain point, you know, it was kind of chugging along, doing fairly good sales figures until Gillian Anderson decided to, and obviously this is not her decision, but I guess she was approached. They wanted to remarket their magazine in, in a way that people will be more inclined to buy it. And of course, we got one of the, well, probably one of the most iconic covers where Dana Agent Scotty strips off to her undies and poses in front of FHM. And FHM, by the way, it's a very tasteful publication. Obviously, it doesn't exist anymore in terms of the hardback edition. But back then, it was about tasteful covers, presenting women in a very sexy and feminine way. <laughs> And of course, nobody knew that Gillian Anderson was packing that body underneath that very stiff outfit on the X-Files. <laughs> so we have her. And of course, my other favorite cover is Rachel Stevens, who was part of this group called S Club 7. Very cheesy teenage group, but she knew that she wanted to probably expose herself a bit more. And I've probably exposed is probably the wrong way to phrase it, but she wanted to kind of put herself out there and you know this launched her singing career as well that was a short-term thing but it got her out there what's wrong with that cover you know, she's curvaceous she's got a very tasteful bikini on what is wrong with that and that's my point right i was told uh, last year oh certain actresses get pressurized into doing these things Look, in this situation, these women had the free mind to think whether this was going to be a good or a bad move. They're in control of their bodies. It's their bodies, nobody else's. Yeah, you can argue that once they expose themselves, then they become everybody's property because everybody's going to be gawping at them. But that's been around since the dawn of time, man. So I bet you if you spoke to these women now, oh, did you think you objectified yourself back in the 90s? Nope, it was just a good career move and it made good business sense. I mean, these women went on to get lucrative deals. Look at mine in class when she was in Get Me Out of Here, I'm a Celebrity, the very first season when that show started and you saw her having that shower in the jungle. And of course, they did this whole spoo thing where like Anton Deco like, looking at her like, oh my God, and suddenly, it really catapulted her career. And do you ever hear Mylene Class talking about the fact, oh, I wish I hadn't done that now. She embraces her sexuality, her feminin femininity. So good for her for doing that. But people are Froskin who says, oh, you don't find me bangable as uh, like Olivia Munn and Morgan Webb. But she sounds very jealous. What I hated about the whole diatribe as well, they're attacking the old version of G4. You know, their new version, which again, I like to call G4 skin, it's all about these elaborate set pieces where the cameras roll out and you get people like, uh Hoke, is it Hokin, the wrestler, or the guy? He's just sat there, and he's like, he looks very lost in the wind. He doesn't know what he's doing. It's like, they do this drawn out. It's, it's boring. It really is boring. I'm sat there thinking, when are we going to see some gameplay talk? You know, when are we going to see what you guys? You know, why? Why did I come here in the first place? So I end up going to other channels that focus on video games and talk about them from start to finish, not about bloody politics. I don't give a shit about politics. Well, but. On the other side of the coin, okay, you're talking about objectifying people. What about Marvel? What about their treatment of men in the MCU? So this is courtesy of Film Threats, which is a, a channel belonging to Chris Gore. Chris Gore is one of my heroes. This man talks a lot of sense. He's an independent filmmaker and a supporter of indie films. So Film Threat, which I've subscribed to, make sure I get the alert button on for that. Let's watch this. Um, it might be copyrighted, but then again, they have, um, I guess this is a remix of the song I'm about to play, but I haven't seen this video before. I'm gonna watch it for the first time. So let's enjoy it, folks. See the reason why uh, the MCU suddenly got a lot of female fans on board. <laughs> I 
I don't think Chris Hemsworth had a problem taking his top off, do you? Oh my god, oh, oh my, oh, hello, uh, what? <laughs> He's clearly not happy, is he? Edward Norton, bloody hell. <laughs> Days without a shirt, one? Yeah, that lingering close-up of Edward Norton's taut physique. <laughs> no way, I'm disco dancing. I'm a model. Oh, look, Liv Tyler. Wow. How was she allowed to look in that movie? Yeah, we can count Hulk as being a... Yeah, yeah, why not? You're objectifying Hulk. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, forgot that we had a topless uh, Mark Ruffalo here. God, yeah. Damn. Rest in peace, Harry Dean Stanton. Yeah, topless Tony Stark, of course. This is when Gwyneth Paltrow went down, in my opinion. Pardon the phrase. Okay, yeah, yeah, we get a bit of a uh, scar Joe there. <laughs> wow, not the Chris Evans I wanted to see. Yep, yeah, oh yes, yeah, this, this is one of those moments where I think men and women were just like, whoa, holy crap. I do like the first Avenger. Really underrated film, in my opinion. <laughs> very good. Very, very good film threat. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Uh, of course, Chris Pratt. Yeah, he went topless as well, didn't he? Yeah, they objectified themselves. And did anybody tell him that it was the wrong thing to do? No, of course not. And of course, what's really funny about those male characters as well, they weren't insufferable unlike the females that we see in other iterations. Oh God, I don't know what is wrong with Hollywood these days. It's like a sucky bus has just come in, has just taken out everybody's right side of thinking from their brains, and it's just left them in a state of limbo that, yes, we must project the message, we must do better. It is absolutely Friggin' insane. I it might just be me. Maybe I'm just imagining it. Maybe I'm this I'm, I'm destined to be this mad podcaster. Maybe I might be like Eric Bogassian in talk radio, an Oliver Stone film. If you haven't seen it, it is absolutely fantastic and quite relevant to what is happening today in the world of entertainment. But Froskin, she needs to get help. She's a very embittered, enraged insufferable woman i've seen her in interviews where she's like the proclaimed activist like she's the white savior i'm saying that very loosely but she once accused the legal legends panel as being too white but kind of disregards her own skin color in the process do you know what i mean it is just so weird and it maybe it's a sign of mental illness i'm not a doctor I'm not going to quantify or qualify that, but when you see these kind of takes, these kind of breakdowns in a public domain like YouTube, you have to wonder what is going on with that individual and whether they keep the same cast of people for the next six months on G4 Skin TV, I don't know. But like I said in the previous video, if I were running that, and Comcast is, is like one of the owners of this particular network, so shouldn't Comcast step in and maybe do something about it? or are they going to leave G4 Skin TV and his very expensive TV studio just to get on like nothing happened? Did you enjoy this video today, folks? I had a laugh watching it. It was great. And Film Threat, awesome, awesome channel. Chris Gore, one of my heroes. Now, folks, if you enjoyed this today, do leave a like below. Smash that like button right into the corner of that ring. And I'll see you on the next video. And in the wise words of Froshkin herself... That people are working hard to make free content for you. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Peace! <laughs>
In the ass end of space, even aliens watch Jason King on Kung Fu Hot Dog. Duke Nukem approves this guy.